look, I think that the future stay down no matter what happens. We get a great report from Morgan Stanley, which we're going to hear. It doesn't matter. Johnson Johnson, better than expected. It doesn't matter. Abbott Labs, complete blow away. It doesn't matter. Uh, Taiwan Semi last night, fantastic. Doesn't matter. Apple uh, price bump, doesn't matter. Amazon. And when you get like that, that just says, OK, look, let the sellers get their job done. They've, there's some agenda here. They're obviously not caring about news. They're not reacting to better retail sales, which I thought was terrific, or even uh, jobless claims down again. Every time that happens, there's usually a, a great trend up. But someone's a seller. When I say someone's a seller, there's, there is big money that wants out right now. I think a lot of people are very confused about what's going on. NASDAQ, Amazon down 10% since the, since the week began. So consequently, uh, there's, a, there's no bid underneath, no matter what the companies say. That will change probably midday. I think it's an okay day. All right. We'll see, Jim. Obviously, um, we talk about the market looking forward uh, through some of the news flow. And, you know, you take some of the bank commentary about second half growth versus first half. It's not nearly as constructive. And we'll see whether Gorman backs up what City and Wells and J.P. Morgan have said this week. Well, look, I do think, and David, you've got to chime in on this, that the losses sure. are far lower than expected. And yet there's a kind of a ennui. I mean, each bank has been saying, you know what? We just went through the greatest stress test in history and we came out with flying colors. And flying colors is equal to a down one to two percent for all of them. That's not what I would have expected. Uh, people just do not like this group, David, and they are still not not giving anybody their due, James Gorman, whole new model, much higher, uh, much less risk, uh, nine times earnings. What? Well, why? Well, I think in part it's got to be that people don't expect anywhere near the level of financing activity that we saw in the first half of the year. And certainly in that yeah. condensed period from, let's call it mid-March or late March until end of June, uh, Jim, you know, you just can't maintain that. Or can you? I mean, how many companies are going to need to go back to the equity and or debt markets to raise more money? We see Norwegian filing for another $250 million worth of stock. Um, but, uh, you know, there's that. So it's seen as perhaps a one off. There's still a lack of M&A activity. And here I'm talking more about you know, the likes of Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley that do rely a lot on that. J.P. Morgan, to a lesser extent, than some of the others. So, there's that, and then there's just the concern about continued reserve bills that are going to need to happen, given the uncertainty out there, given the rising caseloads in so many states and the prospect of potentially future closures or at least lack of economic activity or, or lessening of economic activity.